Ah, <sighs> you never forget your first love. I've owned well over 20 vehicles in my life, but there will always be a special place in my heart for my very first car. This 1978 Chevrolet Caprice Classic. Welcome to the channel for anyone who wants to enjoy cars without breaking the bank. I am so excited to share my thoughts and ratings of my first car and a brief history of how and why it came about. The question is why? The question is why? This car was big news when it debuted in 1977, the year of disco and Star Wars. The Caprice that came before it was a step behind the times by then. In the post-gas crisis world, it was way too thirsty. Big was out and small was in, so Chevy put the Caprice on a weight loss diet, a big one. It's much more like it than it. The new Caprice weighed in at an astonishing 600 pounds less than the older car, but it kept the formula of a big car for a small price. The new design was a massive hit, selling 660,000 units in its first year, making it the number one selling car in 1977. It was a critical success as well. In its debut year, it won Motor Trend's coveted Car of the Year award, and even though the Caprice hadn't changed much by 1983, it still landed a spot on Car and Driver's 10 Best list that year. And this design lasted all the way to 1990, the year of the uh, MC Hammer and the first Ninja Turtles movie? I don't know. These Caprices are dubbed B-bodies, and you could order them as a sedan, a wagon, a coupe, and it was a popular option as a police cruiser and as a taxi cab. My history with the Caprice started in 1997. Yup, that's me, age 14 when I got it. Look at that stylish stud. I've been a car nut since birth, so as soon as I was 14 and I could get my learner's permit, I begged my parents to loan me a few grand to buy a car. They agreed to the loan, but that meant they could choose what car I'd be driving. They found this Caprice at a local estate sale. I'll admit I wanted my first car to be sportier, but my parents wanted me to be in something slow and huge so I wouldn't kill myself doing donuts or getting in wrecks. Probably a good call, honestly. The car had 50,000 miles on it and it cost 2,000 bucks. So like it or not, this was gonna be my first car, my first automotive love. But enough time has passed that I can rate it objectively. So let's see how it does with the Practical Car Guy rating system. It's a 10 point, 10 category system that I'll be using to compare and rank all the cars I've ever owned. Now there are a lot of car rating systems out there, but in short, I'm gonna be putting a lot more emphasis on the things that make a car reliable, easy, inexpensive, and fun to own as a daily driver from someone who has actually owned them. First of all, classic styling. I want it to look like a nice big classic car. Our first category is looks. It's a clean, simple, boxy, classy design inside and out. The only styling detail to note is the funky aero coupe rear glass that the early coupes have. Other than that, it's as square as the box it was shipped in. It's a shame that Chevy didn't stick with their way snazzier original concept illustration, as shown here in Motor Trend. But that blank slate they ended up with makes the car styling super flexible at pulling off a variety of looks. So there's potential here, but from the factory, I give it a five out of 10. Like the best things in life, the classic value of Caprice has stood the test of time. Moving on to reliability, and for this category, I'm scoring based on how reliable a car is now, not necessarily when it first came out. For the time, these were pretty simple and sturdy. At least for the later model years, Consumer Reports gave these an average rating for reliability. But four decades of age will be tough on any old car, so it's probably not going to be a dependable daily driver for most people anymore. Even back when I owned it, I had a few problems with my car. Number one being how hard it was to get the dang thing started. Later cars were fuel injected, but my early car was carbureted. So it took just the right amount of gas pedal pressing to get it to fire up without flooding it. And eventually I fried the starter and had to get a new one installed. Once I had it started, my car was relatively problem free. Part of that was because my car was a base model that didn't have a lot of the problematic power options that tended to break. Other common issues to look out for are vacuum leaks that are typical for the period. And if you find a car with the schmancy vinyl roof, watch out for rust buildup underneath. Unfortunately, parts are becoming scarce and even junkyard cars are gone or picked over at this point. That said, 
if you can find parts, the mechanicals are old school simple, and there's a lot of space to do your work. Overall, I give the reliability rating a four out of 10. Decent for such an old car, but keep in mind, if you're looking for day in, day out reliability of say, like a new Toyota, probably best to look elsewhere. Uncompromised V8 performance. Drivetrain. Quick rundown of the options. For early cars like mine, you could get the six cylinder, which made the car look like it got great gas mileage in the commercials, but it was woefully underpowered. Most cars were a little better and had the mid-level 305 cubic inch V8. The top of the line was the 350 V8 that also got a four barrel car. Unbeknownst to my parents, mine had the 350 four barrel. Oh yeah, donuts in my future. But no, even with the top engine, it was still pokey. Motor train clocked zero to 60 miles per hour in 10.8 seconds. Darn good for the era, eh, not great by modern standards. The transmission is the weak link here, as the only option was a three-speed automatic. It's easy to forget how bad automatics used to be before they had electronic control and more gears to work with. The sound of the car wasn't great either. Not much of a Chevy V8 rumble, just more like a dull roar, at least in stock form. I completely see why aftermarket exhausts are a popular modification with these cars. So even with the biggest engine available, the drivetrain gets a two out of 10. It's not fast, fun, or engaging. That might seem harsh, but that's just how most cars were motivated back in the 70s, or unmotivated. Chevy's got the drive, come and get it. Come see for yourself the mileage and value in the new Chevrolet Caprice. Fuel economy. So with all that weight savings, you'd think you'd get great gas mileage, right? No, gas mileage did improve a few MPGs from 1976 to the redesign in 77, but we're talking going from god awful to just awful. By modern EPA measurements, my car was rated at 12 miles per gallon in the city and a scorching 15 miles per gallon on the highway. I averaged around 10, but I was tromping in the car pretty hard as a teenager, so no surprise there. 3 out of 10 for gas mileage. Ugh, I feel so bad for ragging on my car, you guys. I loved it, I swear. While other full-size automobiles are shrinking, there remains an uncompromised American classic. Handling! There was no getting a handle on it, sorry. Here's some clips from a Swedish movie I found that gives you a good sense of how it wobbled along. Sloppy steering, floaty suspension, hilarious body roll, small tires, put it all together and you might as well have been piloting a waterbed. You could improve things a bit with the optional F41 sports suspension option that costs, get this, 37 bucks. But most Caprice buyers skip that option, including mine. Those cheapskates. So without it, two out of 10 is all I can give it in the handling department. The balls bounce in the front wheel container, but are hardly moving in the container attached to the hood and in the passenger compartment. A smooth, quiet ride. Moving on to the comfort category. Finally, something that Caprice was actually designed for. You get a lot of room here, and because the front seat was a bench, you could fit six people in a pinch. The ride was gooey. One second, please. Look at that dude, socks and sandals. What a great combo. I gotta get back to the folks, okay. Where were we? The ride was gooey smooth, but the suspension wallowed like a boat in a storm. The seats were made in an era where the design target was the family couch and not necessarily the human back. So the cushioning was amazingly soft and squishy and it felt awesome for short trips, but on long trips they lacked any support and made even my teenage spine ache. At least it was pretty quiet inside. The comfort category is also a measurement of features and quality of materials, and once again the Caprice just can't measure up to modern standards. The radio was awful, all you got was this single tinny speaker screwed into the middle of the dash. As for the materials, the velour on the seats was magnificent, but everything else was the cheap rubbery plastic and stick on fake wood that was par for the course of the time. Bit of a mixed bag, so 6 out of 10 for overall comfort. And I'll bet you it's more manageable in city traffic too. And it's more manageable in city traffic too. Practicality. Even though the car was big, it was easy to park. The thin pillars and the upright greenhouse meant it was easy to see out of. 
and the hood ornament out front was an excellent guide for judging distance. Or at least mine was until a friend of mine thought it would be hilarious to jump onto my hood while I was driving away from Boy Scouts. He broke this off with his foot in the process. Thanks a lot, Aaron Turner. The trunk was huge, big enough to fit a lawnmower, but it was only partially carpeted in the car. It had a super high lift over, and the huge spare tire was mounted right in the middle back there, eating up a lot of space. I also wasn't a fan of the gas cap design, which was hidden behind the hinged rear license plate. The plate would fold down like a mailbox, but it had this stiff spring that would snap the plate back at you, and the sharp edge of the plate would skin my hand just about every damn time I filled it up. Speaking of hands, I'd sure appreciate it if you use yours to hit that like button below. This is a new show, so liking this video really helps the YouTube algorithm. Many thanks. Another bonus for making the Caprice practical, it could seriously tow up to 6,000 pounds. That's pickup truck territory. Overall, a very useful and easy car to live with, so it earns a seven out of 10 in the practicality category. Onwards to safety. This category is measured from a modern perspective and the Caprice is obviously lacking in the safety features you'd expect nowadays, like airbags or rollover structure or side impact protection. The brakes are horrendous by modern standards. This road test from the time measured a 165 foot stopping distance from 60 miles per hour. It's about 50 feet longer than your average modern car can do. And forget about anti-lock brakes to help you control the skid. The only positives for safety is the sheer size and solidity of the construction. There's yards of heavy gauge steel between you and whatever's coming at you. And unlike modern cars, the bumpers were huge, solid, and heavy. No plastic crap. So for safety, I'm rating the Caprice a three out of 10. At any sort of low speed, this thing was a solid tank. And in a high speed crash or rollover, they'd probably have to hose you out. And something for your desk. Vice President. Today, Chevrolet has something for you too. Discover Caprice Classic. Now it's here. Your reward, just lean back, it's all yours! Specialness. Finally, here's a category where the passage of time has worked for the Caprice instead of against it. Back when these cars were new, they were run of the mill, and the driving experience was just as uninspired as any other sedan of the time. But nowadays, most of these B-bodies are gone. And if you do find one and drive it, the experience is like a blast from the past that now has a simple, direct, mechanical feel that modern cars just don't have. And that's special enough for a 7 out of 10. Chevrolet Caprice Classic. You can spend more. The question is why? Our last category is purchase price. And a quick note about how I score this one. I've designed this sliding scale to judge the category. The lower the purchase price, the higher the score. I'm looking at the typical price of a clean, mostly stock example with average miles in good running condition in today's domestic marketplace. The score has nothing to do with how much it costs when it was new, or whether I think it's a good value or not, or if I think the prices are gonna go up or down in the future. It's purely objective. As for Caprice prices, man, the days of getting a clean example like mine for just a few grand are a thing of the past. The Caprice has recently slipped into the realm of collectible classic. Nice Caprices seem to hover in the 10 to $13,000 range, which lands the car a six on my scale. I'm afraid I would've had to mow a lot of lawns to pay for this car nowadays. Today's Chevrolet is Caprice, named one of the 10 best cars you can buy. Add up the 10 categories and the total comes out to 45 out of a possible 100 points. This is the first of my 20 plus cars, so we don't have anything to compare it to quite yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be one of the lower scores as it's the oldest car that I've ever owned. Don't get me wrong, I love old cars, but the Chevy Caprice came during the malaise era of American car design. For the time, yeah, it was a home run. Cars have just come a long way since then. And for the average budget-minded enthusiast today who wants an involving driving experience that they can rely on their car as a daily, there's so many better options out there. However, for the right person who misses the old days when car luxury was a matter of size instead of features, these B-bodies are still worth cherishing. And even though my car wasn't perfect, I still adored it. And I have dreams about it to this very day. It was a special car for me at a special time, and I'll always be grateful that it was my first. 
But let me know about your first car in the comments below. Would it still hold up to scrutiny today? Did you or someone you know have one of these B-bodies? And if so, what were your memories of it? And be sure to subscribe for more practical car guy tips and reviews. My second car is up next, and unlike my Caprice, I actually got to choose this one. Thanks for watching, and stay practical. Thank you very much. Um, it's time to go now. Kids, everybody on the bus. Bye-bye, kids. Bye-bye. Oh, nice bunch of kids. Really good people. Hi, guys. 